So this is the 6.4 guided practice. What I would want you to do is to open up your book to page 433 and you and I are going to do the guided practice together. <clears throat> now, I want you to make sure that you don't just copy the whole problem down and then just move to the next one because that's not going to help you. I want to make sure that you're following with me step by step. You're probably going to have to pause the video and unpause the video quite a bit, and that's okay. <clears throat> so the the thing I'm trying to achieve here for this guided practice is a step-by-step -step demonstration of how to do these kinds of problems. And so it kind of follows the philosophy of I'm going to teach you how to fish, so watch me fish. Um, and so that's kind of the approach we're taking here. Okay, so go ahead and write number one down on your paper. Make sure your name gets put at the top. And I won't tell you when to pause the video, but if you need to pause the video to catch up to a certain point, I'll do my best not to rush. But if you do need to pause the video or even go back a few steps to catch up to a certain point, that's totally fine. Okay? All right, so make sure you read number one in the book. Pause the video if you have to, but read number one in the book, and then let's go ahead and go. All right, so we want to see if x plus 1 is a factor of the polynomial p of x. So the number negative 1 would be the root, or the 0, of x plus 1. I copy down the coefficients, like so. Drop the 2. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. Then I add, and I get 0. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. And then I add, and I get negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. And then I add, and I get negative 4. Negative 1 times negative 4 is 4. And then I add, and I get 0. And because I ended up with a remainder of 0, the answer is yes, x plus 1 is a factor of p of x. So by the end of problem one, you should have this, what you're seeing right here, this written on the paper. And hopefully you just didn't write it all down at once, but you followed with me, because that's what I desire. I want you to follow with me, step by step. And even if you want to pause the video and try a problem completely on your own, and then come to the video to check it, that's okay too. I would even recommend that. All right. I want to demonstrate if x minus 2 is a factor of the polynomial. So what is the 0 or the root of x minus 2? It's 2. Write out the coefficients. I have to have a 0 here because there's an x to the first term missing. Drop the 5. 2 times 5 is 10 and I add and I get 11. 2 times 11 is 22 and then I add and I get 22. 2 times 22 is 44 and then I add and I get 37. I did not get 0. So that means that x minus 2 is not a factor of p of x. Is 2x minus 4 a factor of p of x? <clears throat> well, notice that inside of 2x minus 4 there's a greatest common factor of 2. So I can pull 2 out of that, and I have 2 times x minus 2. Notice that there's also a greatest common factor of 2 in p of x, and so we can factor that out. And so we have matching 2's now. So 2 is definitely a factor. So now the question is, is x minus 2 a factor of x to the fifth minus 2x to the fourth plus x squared minus x minus 2? And so what is the root or the 0 of x minus 2? It's 2. And I use the coefficients of this polynomial in parentheses because I've already factored out a 2. That's what they have in common. And so I drop the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. 
negative 1 plus 2 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And negative 2 plus 2 is 0. Got a 0 remainder. So that means, yes, 2x minus 4 is a factor of p of x. All right, <clears throat> again, follow with me step by step. So on the paper, go ahead and write x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1. First thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and zoom in on this. That wouldn't hurt. We're going to focus on the first two terms. So I have a greatest common factor of x squared in the first two terms. And I pull out x squared. And that leaves me with x squared times what's left over, x plus 1. I have a greatest common factor of negative 1 here in these two terms, so I pull out a negative 1. So now I have negative 1 times x plus 1. Well, now I have a greatest common factor of x plus 1. So I pull that out to the front, and I have x plus 1 times x squared minus 1. Now this is the difference of factors, or the difference of squares. So x squared minus 1 factors into x plus 1 times x minus 1. And now I have x plus 1 repeating two times. So I finish off by saying x plus 1 squared times x minus 1. And there it is. That is now factored completely. Let's go ahead now and factor x cubed plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 20 look at the first two terms. Uh, what do I have in common? What's my GCF? Well, it's x squared. So I pull out an x squared. And what's left over after I pull that x squared out is x plus 5. Now I pull out a negative 4. That's the greatest common factor here. So I have negative 4 times x plus 5. And now I have a common factor of x plus 5. So I pull that out to the very front. And I'm left with x plus 5 times x squared minus 4. And that's the difference of squares. So x squared minus 4 factors again into x minus 2 times x plus 2. And since none of the factors repeat, that's my final answer. Number 6, <clears throat> 8x cubed plus 4x squared minus 2x minus 1. The greatest common factor focusing on the very first two terms is 4x squared. Factor out of 4x squared and we have 2x plus the number 1. That's important. It won't be just 2x because when you pull out a 4x squared here, if you can see my cursor, well, then there will at least be a 1 left over, right? And so that's why it's 2x plus 1. Factor out a negative 1 here. And so there's my negative 1. And I've got negative 1 times 2x plus 1. Well, now what's my common factor? It's 2x plus 1. That's my common factor. So I factor that out to the front. And I have 2x plus 1 times 4x squared minus 1. Oh, I'm hoping you're able to pause the video when you need to. Well. 4x squared minus 1 is the difference of squares. That actually factors into 2x plus 1 times 2x minus 1. And now I have a repeating factor of 2x plus 1 two times. So I finally write 2x plus 1 squared times 2x minus 1. And that is number 6. Moving right along. Here we go. 2x cubed minus 2x squared minus 8x plus 8. What I could have done from the very beginning, but I didn't, and that's okay, is I see a factor of 2 everywhere, so I could have factored a 2 out of everything. I didn't do that. I just focused on the first two terms. So what's my greatest common factor here? That's 2x squared. <clears throat> so I factor that out. And what's left? x minus 1. What's my greatest factor here? I'm going to call it a negative 8. So I factor out a negative 8. That flips the sign here. So I have negative 8 times x minus 1. And now x minus 1 is my GCF. 
So I factor that to the front, <coughs> and I'm left with x minus 1 times 2x squared minus 8. Now, look at the 2x squared minus 8. That has a greatest common factor of 2. So I'm going to yank out a 2 and pop the 2 at the front. That's kind of like what we do with our coefficients. If you ever just yank out a number itself, just pop it in the front and you're good to go. That leaves me with 2 times x minus 1 times x squared minus 4. But x squared minus 4 is the difference of squares. And so I split that apart into x minus 2 times x plus 2. And my final answer is 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 2. And there we go. That's number 7. Number 8. Here we go. What is the GCF of 2x cubed minus 3x squared? It's x squared. So we yank out an x squared, and we have x squared times 2x minus 3. And then here, I'm going to yank out a negative 1. That flips the sign here. So I have negative 1 times 2x minus 3. And now my greatest common factor here is 2x minus 3. So I factor that to the front. And I have 2x minus 3 times x squared minus 1. And now x squared minus 1 is the difference of squares. So that factors into x minus 1 times x plus 1. And so the final answer is 2x minus 3 <clears throat> times x minus 1 times x plus 1. Okay, next one, number 9. 12x squared plus 3x minus 24x minus 6. What is the greatest common factor for the first two terms? It's 3x. So I factor out a 3x, and I have 3x times 4x plus 1. The greatest common factor here is negative 6, so I factor out a negative 6. And remember, when you factor a number out completely, there should still be a 1 left over. So factor out negative 6 times 4x plus 1. And now 4x plus 1 is the greatest common factor. So I factor that to the front. And I have 4x plus 1 times 3x minus 6. I'm not going to leave it there because 3x minus 6 has a greatest common factor of 3. So I pull three, a 3 out and I put it in the front. So I have 3 times 4x plus 1 times what's left over after you pull the 3 out, x minus 2. Number 10. So number 10 is the difference of cubes. And so 8 can be written as 2 to the third power. And m to the sixth can be written as m squared to the third power, because 2 times 3 is 6. Now make sure, if you have to pause the video here and then go to your know-it note, read your know-it note again about the difference of cubes. Just take a minute to do that, just so that you're kind of familiar with what's going to go on here. So the 2 is kind of like my a, and the m squared is like my b. And if you looked at the know it note, the form is a minus b times a plus a squared plus a b plus b squared. And so that's where all this is coming from. So here's a minus b, and then here's the a squared plus the a b plus the b squared. That's where this form comes from. And so we can do more of those, and we will do more of those to practice with those, but I'm hoping you at least a little bit see the pattern here, because that's what it is. It's all pattern recognition. All right, let's do number 11. 2t to the 7th plus 54t to the 4th. So these two terms have a greatest common factor of 2t to the 4th. And so that's what I do. I factor out a 2t to the 4th, and I place it in the front. But what let's, what's left over is t to the third plus 27. And t to the third is a cube. And 3 to the third power is also a cube. So that means that t to the third plus 3 to the third is the sum of two cubes. 
which means I go to the know it note pause the video if you have to look at the know it note there and the sum of two cubes factors into a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared the a in this case is t and the b in this case is 3 because 3 to the third is 27 so final answer is 2t to the fourth times t plus 3 times t squared minus 3t plus 9. And that is number 11. Number 12. This is the sum of two cubes. x to the third plus 64 is the same thing as x to the third plus 4 to the third. So my a is x and my b is 4. So this becomes x plus 4, a plus b, x squared minus 4 times x plus 4 squared, which is 16. And that's number 12. 13 also falls into the sum of two cubes category. 27 is the same as 3 to the third, and this is x to the third. So my a is 3, and my b is x. 3 plus x times 3 squared minus 3 times x plus x squared. Again, I'm following the pattern that's in those know it notes. 14. 4t to the fifth minus 32t squared. So this problem has a greatest common factor of 4t squared. So we factor out a 4t squared to the front and we're left with t to the third minus 8. Okay, well 8 is the same as 2 to the third power. So my a would be t and my b would be 2. So this has the form of the difference of squares. So this factors into 4t squared times t minus 2, there's my a minus b, times t squared plus 2 times t plus 2 squared. And that's 14. 15 follows the difference of two cubes, y to the third minus 125. But 125 is the same as 5 to the third power. So my a is y and my b is 5. So this becomes y minus 5 times y squared plus 5 times y plus 5 squared, which is 25. All right, before we do this problem, I want you to look at the graph in the textbook on page 433 for number 16. Make sure that you see where the graph touches the x-axis. See if you can locate those on your own. I'm going to tell you what they are, but see if you can locate them on your own first. Remember where it hits the x-axis, those are called the zeros or the roots. And so we have three roots from this picture. Negative 2, negative 5, and 7. Go back to the picture and see if you can see that that's the case, if, if that doesn't make sense to you. Well, because negative 2, negative 5, and 7 are the roots, that means that x plus 2 x plus 5 and x minus 7 are the factors. And so I'm going to use synthetic division to show you that they are indeed the factors. So first I take negative 2 and I synthetically divide it into v of x. Notice what we're missing here in v of x. We're missing an x squared term. And so that's why the 0 gets recorded here. So we drop the 1 and 2 times 1 is negative 2. 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 39 plus 4 is negative 35. 
negative 2 times negative 35 is positive 70. Negative 70 plus 70 is remainder 0. So that guarantees that x plus 2 is a factor. Now I take the same coefficients I ended up with here, and now I'm going to synthetically divide in negative 5. So I drop the 1. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Negative 2 plus negative 5 is negative 7. Negative 5 times negative 7 is 35. And negative 35 plus 35 is 0. So that shows or that demonstrates that negative 5 is a 0 of the volume function. And now let's just do 7 on the coefficients we have remaining. Drop the 1. This is going to be beautiful. Drop the 1. 7 times 1 is 7. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. And so all we're left with now is a coefficient of 1, which I put in the front. And there it is. There's my volume function, or my v of x function. So we actually used synthetic division to factor the function itself. So 1 times x minus 7 times x plus 5 times x plus 2. That's why synthetic division is just so darn cool, because it can be actually used to factor out a polynomial. And that is the guided practice. I hope this was helpful a little bit. I hope you're starting to see the pattern a little bit of how these kind of problems work. God bless you, wherever you are today.